Hello. Yes, may I speak to Mr. James Harding, please? Yes, this is Mr. David Navarro Thomas. I'm calling to inform you that you've won 72 million US dollars and a brand new Mercedes Benz. Yes, sir. I am very excited to bring you this news. Welcome to SoFlow TV. <laughs> Welcome to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Listen up. <laughs> this chopper was chopping and him chop wrong. Yeah? All right. William Webster is a ex-FBI and CIA director. And he helped the feds to capture a Jamaican phone scammer. Now, you might think that uh, I can make the phone call and... If I run into the wrong person over the phone, right? Plus, I'm in a different country. I could just get out the way. That's what I phone them because it's a banger. It's a throwaway phone. That's what the phone lose all trace of me. So here's how this all went down. The caller with the Jamaican accent told the 90 year old district man um, <laughs> that he had won $72 million and a brand new Mercedes Benz in the Mega Millions lottery. But the man needed to send him $50,000 in taxes and fees to get his money. Now, of course, if you won $72 million and you have some money saved up, $50,000 to get $72 million is an easy trade-off, right? A no-brainer. He also told the man from the Washington district that he had done his research on him as the top winner. Sir... I've done my research on you, you know. You're a great man, sir, is what the Jamaican man said. You was a judge. <laughs> Hello, Chapa. You was a judge. At least try to get your at least try to get your grammar correct, right? Here's what he said, quote unquote. You was a judge. You was an attorney. You was a basketball player. You were in the U.S. Navy. Homeland Security. I know everything about you. I even seen your photograph. And I seen your precious wife. Hmm. Now, I seen your precious wife could be seen as intimidating in some way. Because, you know, somebody call you and say all this stuff to you about you. And it, it, it's not public knowledge. You're like, well, damn, who is this? You know, you, you know my background, you know the places I've been, the things I've done. The Jamaica research, the Jamaican's research, however, did not turn up everything. Because if it did, see, he didn't learn that the man that he was calling was the former director of the FBI and the C <laughs> and the C Oh no, sorry, may I have a laugh. All that research that he did, you were in the Navy, you was an attorney, you used to play basketball, you worked for Homeland Security at one time. I seen your photograph. I even seen your precious wife. Missed the fact that this man was actually the director, not an employee, but the director of the FBI and the CIA. The only person ever to hold both of those jobs so is a classic man he's a classic man i don't know regular smuddy macaulay no he's the only person to have ever been director of both the fbi and the cia and out of all the people in the world to call as a scammer this is who you end up calling and he didn't know that william h webster would call him back the next day with the FBI listening in on the phone call. So him thinks say, bingo, I'm about to get my $50,000. Yes, my come up now. In what is called a reverse sting, Webster obtained the man's real name and his email address while stringing him along and never quite committing to sending the $50,000. You know, I'm just talking nice to him. It's going to take a few weeks for me to come up with that amount of money and these kind of things. He also a former federal district and appeals court judge. So he knows the law inside out. You hear what I say? 
former director of the FBI and the CIA, the only person to have ever held both those positions, both um, that position in both those places, FBI and CIA, and also a former federal district and appeals court judge. He said, I'm so, this is the Jamaican donor. I am so anxious. Are you to get the money? Um, I'm so anxious for you to get the money, but I'm going to take, um, it's going to take me a while to do it. You know, he tell the Jamaican man that and the Jamaican man is saying, I'm so anxious for you and your winnings. You know, that's a lot of money. That's life changing money and stuff in there. Try hype up the man, not knowing that the FBI was on the line all along. Shout out to my Jamaican scammers. But listen, you see your banger and that you throw a phone. You guys going to have to be on the run because get given to the right person at the right time. They can in real lifetime track you. All right. The man told him the Jamaican scammer tell him, say, well, if it's going to take that long, you know, you can pay a part in the meantime. Remember, you know, chop where chop a line, you know, the goal is to get some money in today. The <laughs> So if you can't send the 50,000 all at once, send something. 1,000 will do, 500 will do, but send something today, right? The caller said, um, but yeah, yeah, you can you can pay in part, you know, so you can pay some today. He was later identified as Keneal A. Thomas. The man keep him on the line. The man asked him, uh, how much is a part? How much, how much, like, how much would you accept as a part payment? He said, you can come with about $20,000 in the meantime, you know, Thomas said. Here's one of the things about the chop of them. They lose character somewhere in the phone call. All you have to do is fluster them and they, they lose character somewhere in the phone call, somewhere along the line. Hey, this is Mr. Stokely Edwards calling from the Canadian Lottery and you've won $500,000 in hard cold cash. All you have to do is send us $1,000 to have your money cleared and sitting in your account in about 24 hours or less. That sounds good until two minutes into the conversation and then you start to hear them sounding like... <laughs> Yeah, man, you can send about 20,000 in, in the meantime. <laughs> in the meantime, because they're getting frustrated right now. That 50,000 ain't coming through. But he said, send 20, the man greedy, you know. But I saw it go. You have to chop a line hard. All right. The conversation was one of many calls that Thomas made to Webster. So it's not one phone call they used to get him. He made multiple phone calls to him and to his wife as well, Linda in 2014 including one in which he promised a bullet straight to the head of linda which is the wife of the person who was the former director of the fbi and the cia him start promise the people them bullet because bullet because the money was not coming thomas was then charged in 2014 with attempted extortion but thomas wasn't arrested until late 2017 after he landed in new york on a flight from jamaica they tracked him they kept him under thumbs and they stayed on kept him on the radar it was somebody who had his papers to fly out i guess he figured work a normal job live in the u.s chill out but when I'm in Jamaica, I can chop the line with a banger, get away with it, and then go back to the U.S. and act like nothing happened. Well, they were well on to him. He had charges racking up from 2014 and they held him 2017 when he flew into the United States of America. I wonder if I them probably game him visa for flying. And he thought, yes, my papers come true, my God, no. He wasn't arrested until he flew into the U.S. in 2017 after he landed in New York on a flight from Jamaica. He went to court. He pled guilty in October of 2022 and faced a prison term of 33 to 41 months at 12 months in a year. So you do the maths, right? 
under federal sentencing guideline. But with Webster and his wife in the courtroom, Chief U.S. District Judge Beryl Howell on Friday added another two and a half years to Thomas's sentence because the former FBI and CIA director and former judge himself was standing in the courtroom along with his wife and they explained the threats to put a bullet in her head and all this other stuff if the money hadn't come. <laughs> so the judge had another two and a half years, giving him nearly six years to serve before he will be let out. And no doubt, deportation comes after. Howell said that the scam qualified as an organized criminal activity and that Thomas posed a threat to a family member of the victim. The threat of death is another per to another person is a most serious crime, is what he said, right? For which Mr. Thomas is about to pay. We truly hope that the word spread into the criminal community of scammers, especially in Jamaica, that our FBI or Federal Bureau of Investigation and other law enforcement agencies are clamping down on you right now on your predatory behaviors. Side note, Jamaica-based telephone scams have mushroomed in recent years, always targeting the elderly or the most vulnerable American citizens and sometimes destroying victims' lives. And this is the reason why they are going after them with such feverish uh, exuberance. Inevitably, the caller promises large winnings in exchange for a payment of taxes or fees by the American. In Alexandria, Virginia, an 85-year-old man had actually lost his home and his entire life savings. A woman in Dakota lost more than $300,000 of her savings and a man in Knoxville, Tennessee actually committed suicide after sending thousands of dollars all his savings to a jamaican group this is information according to cnn so i know sometimes people say well nobody is really getting hurt others say Cha, a reparations money take it back from them but people are actually committing suicide and i explained this before that you're calling people who suffer from alzheimer's and dementia and usually they can't catch somebody like me and you who are young enough and still have our mental faculties together they normally catch somebody who is elderly lonely lives alone and all these other things right that combined with the alzheimer's and dementia and stuff leaves them out there to be a victim this is why they call this preying on the elderly and vulnerable citizens they're vulnerable because they have underlined ailments that leaves them out there to easily be victimized right federal authorities pursue the scammers when they can but extradition from other countries is difficult and prosecution can take years however the fbi and the cia wants the u.s the jamaican scammers to know that even if it takes years we will be coming for you the FBI was able to document that Thomas was 29 years old, that he was from St. James in Montego Bay, that he collected at least $300,000 with his scam from about three dozen U.S. victims. This is according to his court records, and they didn't catch him until he flew into the U.S. One victim estimated that he alone sent thomas more than six hundred thousand us dollars a big chopper this you know now i see why they said that hey so flo you must feel like a little bit of money man i chop down ya. Yeah. gonna stay there stay far and i walk out on a soul case for minimum wage and them something there and act like you know i get somewhere bossy slave we don't get a choppy line hard yo six hundred thousand us dollars imagine sitting in jamaica and somebody is sending you all this money court papers can only prove that he collected at least three hundred thousand however 
his victims are saying they have proof that they sent him up to 600,000. This is one person. In order to cover his tracks, Thomas sometimes laundered his money through different victims, having one American send money to a second American before... <laughs> Yo, the man I chop with style, you know, listen to the technique, you know, listen to the technique. He sometimes laundered his money through different victims. That means he's chopping you right now, right? He's victimizing you right now. So he would have one person send money to you and then he would tell you that that's a part of your winnings. Now send the rest of your money to clear the fees and we will send on your $72 million. And that is what he did. He sometimes laundered his money through different victims, having one victim send money to a second American before it is sent to him in Jamaica. He provided Webster with the name and the address of a man in California to whom Thomas wanted Webster to send the money. According to a recorded call that Webster made, with the FBI at his side. The scammers often pass around or sell what's called lead lists of potential targets in America. That means we scam these people already, we get some money off of them, hit that number. You might be good to go, more than likely, right? So the lead list, potentials, prosecutors told Washington Post last year and Linda Webster which is the wife of the FBI director, ex-director and CIA ex-director, the one that Thomas promised to put a bullet in our head. Linda Webster said that they have continued to receive calls even after Thomas's arrest. Other people in his network have picked up his lead list and are still <laughs> I saw they end up going to prison and are still calling them. If this is not a big warning, hey, y'all have Thomas lead list, burn it, dash it away, or you guys are going to end up where he's at, right? The Websters were unlikely to fall for such a fraud, but it's frightening when they talk about putting a bullet in your wife's head. The calls to the Websters home started all the way back in March of 2014 with various men calling to tell William Webster, who is the director, former director of FBI and CIA, that he had won the lottery. In June, Thomas began calling, identifying himself as David. Thomas came up with the list. I want to have you all know something, that people are killed for these lists, you know. So because you see someone was using this list in 2014, you don't know how this list ended up with Thomas in 2020 2017 2019 years later down the road right all right so in june thomas began calling identifying himself as david morgan hello yes my name is david morgan and i am a manager at the mega millions i would like to speak to mr webster please yes william webster oh this is he Good morning, Mr. Webster. I'm pleased to inform you that you are the winner of 72 million US dollars and a brand new Mercedes Benz. However, <laughs> Webster saw that he had an email address of Thomas at outlook.com. He asked Morgan, please stop calling me. But Thomas not only continued to call, but he also sent more than 20 emails to Webster. At one point, he's very persistent, right? At one point, Thomas called Linda, which is um, Linda Webster, which is the wife, and told her that he knew no one was at her house the previous night. In another call, Thomas told Linda Webster, so easy that we can get your house a blaze, you know. How is that? And we know, so last night, you were by yourself. Nobody else was home with you. You can be taken care of easily, you know. Send the money. The FBI was able to link the Websters 
to other victims who had reported um, sending funds to Thomas or interacting with David Morgan or who had sent funds to American middlemen who were also victims. Agents tracked these payments through Western Union, MoneyGram, and other means to Thomas or to members of his family. Court records now show. One California man reported receiving a certified check in exchange for sending fees to Jamaica, and he wound up sending 85,000 US dollars to the scammers, even though the certified checks all bounced. Wow. Remember I told you that they are coming to Jamaica. Well, they're already in Jamaica, but their plan is to go to even your family members. That means, say, no way granny get that big house there and pay for all that. She never had a job like that. Thomas was disappointed that Howell had added another 30 months to the sentence, reached a plea agreement with the government, and is considering appeal at the moment. Anyone who thinks they're a victim, they're saying feel free to call the FBI. Let's leave this one right here for now. I'll catch you on the next video. It's SoFlow TV. I'm out. Peace.